Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Alright, so, byte arrays. Classes like byte arrays, bytes, etc. have a very important place in Python, especially when it comes to processing data in the form of images, audio, etc. I am sure you have come across bytes in your high school computer science classes. But if your first programming language is Python, I guess you probably have never played with bytes before. And that's where this video comes in. In this video, let's get comfortable using byte arrays in our programs. Once you understand some fundamental ideas, you will appreciate bytes for what they are, the fundamental building blocks of everything in the world of computer science. And once you have taken a look under the hood, you will also feel more at home working with computers. Excited to get started? Let's get to it. So, byte arrays. The name has two parts, byte and array. Bytes, as you know, are made up of 8 bits. Each bit is a 0 or a 1. So, once we group 8 zeros or 1s together, we get a byte. For example, if all the 8 bits are zeros, like this, then the decimal equivalent of this byte is 0. If we flip the last bit to 1, like this, then we get 1 in decimal. And if we flip all 8 bits to 1, we get the decimal equivalent of 255. Don't worry, these days you don't have to do any fancy math to convert binary into decimal. You can just put your calculator app in programming mode and you can happily convert between binary, decimal, hexadecimal, etc. So coming back to the topic. If all the 8 bits in a byte are zeros, we get 0. And if all the 8 bits are 1, we get 255. So bytes are basically integers, with the values confined between the space of 0 and 255. Simple so far, right? Now let's come to the second part of the name, which is Array. If you have learned languages like C and C++, you probably already know what an array is. If you don't, then you can just think of arrays as a list that can only store one type of object. Now, what did I mean when I say one type of object? To refresh your memories, lists in Python can store any number of different objects like this my list equals one comma true comma apple here we have an integer a boolean object and a string object all in a single list arrays unlike list can only hold one type of object in other words all the objects in an array must belong to the same class for example Items 1, 2, 3, and 4 can be stored in an integer array. Boolean objects like true, false, false, true can be stored in a Boolean array, etc. So, now that we know what bytes are and what arrays are, time to get them together. So, combining both parts of the name, we get the following meaning. A byte array is a list that can store integers from 0 to 255. Simple as that. If you're liking this video so far, be sure to hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm spread this video to more like-minded viewers such as yourself. Alright, so coming back to the topic. Now, when I said a byte array is a list that can store integers from 0 to 255, it's only partially correct. Let me say one more important difference between an array and a list. This is the fact that arrays always populate memory areas which are adjacent to each other, while a list can be broken up and stored in different areas of memory. Explaining this fact will need a whole video in and of itself, so if you are interested I recommend researching this topic yourself. If your aim is just to learn how to use byte arrays, then you can ignore the memory allocation technicalities for the time being. Alright, so now that we have covered the basics, let's dive in and play around with byte arrays. Let's start by creating an empty byte array. You can do so like this. 
x equals byte array. Here the byte array function is actually a constructor that will return a byte array object. We can check that x is a byte array by using the type function like this. So now that we have created a byte array, what can we do with it? Like I said, a byte array is very similar to a list. So we get all the handy functions that the list has to add and delete elements from the byte array, like append, extend, insert, remove, clear, etc. So let's start by adding some elements to a byte array using the append function. So if you write x dot append 3, the integer 3, which is between 0 and 255, will get stored in the byte array. And we can always look at the contents of the byte array like this. As you can see, we have 3 inside the byte array. Now let's try adding one more element. This time, let's be a little naughty and add something which doesn't fit into a byte, say 545. As you can see, the Python interpreter throws an error saying the byte must be in the range of 0 to 256. If you're familiar with lists, methods like extend, insert, remove, etc. should be fairly familiar to you. Anyways, let's have a look at some quick examples. So now I create another byte array with the name y this time. And I use the extend method this time to add elements to it like this. Now, if you look inside y, you get three which is what we stored in x. Okay, now let's try inserting some elements. Let's say at index 0, let's add, say, 5. As you can see, now y contains 5 and 3. Next, let's remove 3. Now, our byte array y just has one value, 5. And we can use the clear method now to get rid of that one also and we're back to an empty byte array. You can only cover so much in a video. I hope this was enough to get you started working with byte arrays, but we've barely scratched the surface. If you wish to get answers for questions like when to use byte arrays, how to convert a list into a byte array, and vice versa, how byte arrays are very useful when working with strings, along with more examples and a more thorough explanation, you can head over to our article on byte arrays on our website embeddedinventor.com which you can use as a reference when working with byte arrays. You can find the link in the description. If you like this video and you wish to support us, be sure to hit that like button. It will help the YouTube algorithm to spread this video to more like-minded individuals such as yourself. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. If you're looking for some quiet reading time, visit our website embeddedinventor.com for some interesting articles. I will see you in the next one.